Well, hello. Sydney's back in lockdown. I think we're up to week five off the top of my head. Um, it all kind of blends into one. <laughs> uh, last time we were in lockdown, I made a few videos about my garden and the uh, veggie patch. And people seemed to like them, I think, because people were craving anything other than shitty American documentaries they saw on Netflix. Um, and so I thought, why not make a few videos about printing? Um, this is not a professional setup at all. Um, there's a dark room in the city that I like to use, uh, which is much better equipped, which I try to do a lot more printing out there. But uh, in terms of just uh, contact sheets and uh, proof images and just, you know, just generally just getting out and isolating yourself for a hot minute and making some prints, it's perfect. Um, so um, yeah, I, th I think before even like thinking about how to make prints is why to make prints. And um, if you're shooting film, which a lot of people are now, which is awesome to see, um, and you have the space and the time, and it's really not much cost. Uh, it's probably like 400 bucks for like a full setup. Um, and like just, just making your own prints just kind of brings you a little bit closer to your photos. Um, it kind of like you, you're, you're looking at an image so much that you're, you're analyzing it. I, I know that I've learned a lot about how I take photos like subconsciously through printing because you're looking at images and how you, you frame images and how you want images to look and how you make images look through printing. Um, and it's, it's relatively um, cost effective for, for what it is. Um, like if you can make prints well and um, you know, like beautiful prints, like silver gelatin is just such a nice medium. Um, and like I only do resin coated papers in here. There's, there's two types of paper, like resin coated is like an like a office works paper and imagine like uh, fiber based is a, I don't know, like a fine art printing paper. Um, and re resin coated papers just is a lot easier to work with when you don't really want to consume as much water and um, put the time into it as much. So resin is a really good option, much cheaper, good way to go. Um, but yeah, so, so the setup is really not difficult. Um, you just need a room, you need a, a light tight room. So this is obviously not light tight at the moment because this is my laundry and um, you can't always have dedicated space for these things. So I've got a big board which uh, goes on the window and then I drape this over it. Uh, a little orange safe light, uh, in larger. You've got your, your trays, you've got a little focus scope, an easel, some contrast filters, and um, a place to wash it. And that's, that's about it really, and a place to dry them. So it's, 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 it's quite a manageable setup. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really, um, not really concerned about how long these videos go because I think everyone's so bored. So if I do ramble a little bit, I'm sorry. It's not gonna be one of those fast paced TikTok videos that everyone's used to watching, but um, that's not really how I work. So um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll set the dark room up and um, and then I'll just guide you through a few of the processes and um, yeah, then we'll, we'll make a print. So before you even think about printing an image, you really have to think about what's on the negative and what you want it to look like. Um, so personally, I really like a kind of a contrasty kind of style, kind of a little bit more contrast than most. But obviously each, each image has its kind of quirks and like when, if, even if you keep all your variables the same with film, you're always going to get these, you know, like changes, which you really have to kind of play with. You, you can't go into a negative and go, well, I want this to look like this. And even if it doesn't look like that, because you just like, just physically can't get it. Like it's not Photoshop. Um, so this particular image, this roll was taken on a, um, a Nikonos 3. It's, it's HP5 plus, uh, so it's a 400 ISO film. So um, it is underwater, so there's not as much contrast um, as some of the um, out of water shots, which is just a general kind of underwater kind of thing. Um, it's a dog of a camera. Um, like you'll get three shots of every roll, but they're really sharp images when you get them sharp. Um, this was the kind of the camera that like a lot of the 60s surfers were shooting on, like uh, like Witzig and stuff, which is which is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, like if like I'm I'm looking at this image and I'm looking looking at the the one kind of highlight dot, and then I'm looking at the rest of the image. It's quite low contrast, but I, I know from previous experience that this that this image does work well as a print. And um, yeah, yeah. But just always take that minute to just kind of look. You know, what am I working with? How can I work with this image? So then all I'm doing is I'm just giving it a bit 
blob, and I'm just going to slot it in to the carrier like that, and close the carrier. So here's actually what I'm seeing when I'm under the light. So what's happening is the, the image is coming through the enlarger and being projected onto here. So the first thing you do is check focus with this little guy. This is just a Patterson focus finder. Um, it has a little mirror here which reflects what's actually coming up and uh, you hover it around the image just to make sure that each corner is in focus and that there's no slant to the board because if you have a bit of a slant then parts are going to be in focus and parts aren't um, and that your enlarger head's level. So once you've done that, um, you need to think about filters. So these are filters. These are uh, Ilford Multigrave filters. They go zero to five and um, they're, they're a little bit like the filters that you have on Instagram in terms of they actually change what the image looks like. But these just adjust the contrast. So a zero filter, this is what the filters look like. It's like that. You can't really see it in the, in the light. But um, you put those beneath the lens and um, these decide what contrast it's going to be. So a zero is going to give you pretty much no contrast. So an image that has a lot of gray tone in it. And five is going to give you something very contrast, which is going to have you know, a lot of deep blacks and a lot of a lot of highlights and and more of that. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put a put a three, maybe a four, into this, and we're going to see what it looks like. Um, we'll do a test strip, and I'll show you what a test strip looks like. So what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing a sheet of paper. Everything has to be light tight with this. grabbing a single sheet out and popping that button back in. Got two sheets left in this box, um, so that'll be good to use up. Now a lot of people cut these with um, you know, scissors and stuff. I don't really subscribe to that. So this is just the test strip, so I just tear them. So that'll be our test strip. So then this bit, this can be used for another test strip, so that doesn't really matter. So that just goes back into the box and we'll now expose this strip. So you have three baths um, that you do when you're developing paper. Uh, the first one's a developer, so that actually produces the image, so it reacts with the silver in the paper and um, the more that it's exposed to light, the, uh, the darker that it will, that will develop. The, uh, the, the second is the water bath, which just washes off the um, washes off the excess developer. Um, it's also a, also known as a stop bath, where you use different chemicals. Um, I'm pretty sure you use a, I think it's alkaline, just to stop the um, stop the process. And the last one is a fixer. Um, the fixer is a smelly one, um, and it basically just um, kind of cements the image onto the paper and makes sure that it doesn't fade. So you put it in the fixer for. About three minutes and then uh, then it's ready to check and test outside. So just put the print outside and having a look at it and I quite like these blacks here those look quite nice uh, but I like these midtones too I think these midtones kind of work on this top layer of the image here versus this bottom layer which I think should be a little bit darker so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, just gonna burn in that bottom layer like I'm doing now just to bring in a little bit more a little bit more uh, black down here and uh, yeah, let's see how that looks. So I've just moved the developer tray into view. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna develop the final print. So you can see down here, because my camera ran out of battery and I had to pop out of the room, I tucked this into the box where <laughs> where it was and uh, had a little bit of a light leak onto it um, which is not necessarily a bad thing for a lot of hipster people but um, not the greatest thing for, for me personally um, but that's alright that can be um, that can be framed out as you might be able to hear the prints are now in a little wash bath um, so it's just the um, the big print and the and little test strip um, there are a few flaws in the big print, um, which I probably wouldn't let through, but uh, it was the last sheet in the box, so 
it will have to go through. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll check them out in a minute. But it's important to let them wash properly. Otherwise, you'll find in 10 years, they'll all be stained. So just looking at the print now, it's out of the, the wash. It hasn't dried properly yet, but uh, looks quite nice. So um, yeah, that's how you make a print in the darkroom. So looking at it now, uh, it's a it's a fraction dark, but it's just a proof print, so that's all right. Um, but I mean, obviously you have your proof prints, then you have your your final prints, and you know, and then you do a batch, so you do ten or so and condition them. I've, I've never actually sold a print though, so don't know why not. Anyway, um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please let me know or share it with someone who you think might enjoy it too. Um, I'll probably do a few a few more of these, maybe um, maybe the image might be decided by Instagram polls or something, because that'd be fun. Uh, yeah, so uh, see you in the next video maybe.